Tokyo Game Show is currently ongoing in Japan, so here's a look at some interesting new games which I have largely not covered on the channel before, with a slant towards Japanese and Chinese titles, with some very weird games in this set. So let's begin with Yasha Legends of the Demon Blade, a stylish action roguelite in a Japanese inspired world and looks sick, with this new trailer showing off the combat and it's too good not to share. One of the more interesting looking games is Igni Stone, in that it might not look like it but it's an action and timing focused roguelite RPG in which you're trying to master the parry system. It's kind of cute and has that Paper Mario vibe in which your goal is to reach level 100 of the dungeon and with a variety of equipable weapons and amulets might have some interesting combos and synergies. This video is brought to you by Galactic Glitch Infinity's Edge, an arena action roguelite with also satisfying gameplay since physics are involved. Yes, while it looks like a space twin stick shooter, you do have fun abilities at your disposal, including grabbing an asteroid and flinging it into the gravitational field of the play area, only for it to slingshot back to destroy your enemies. You can even rip apart enemy ships, grab their missiles and throw it back in their face and more, not to mention plenty of weapon and ability variety which results in fun builds for every run. So if interested, wishlist the game via the link in the description below. Okay, I'm probably going to butcher the pronunciation of this, so apologies in advance, and let me know in the comments how it should be said, but Yohane the Pahelion Blaze in the Deep Blue is an upcoming Metroidvania that upon some googling is based on an anime, but even if you have no context like me, it does still look pretty neat. This is the next title from Inti Creates, who seems to have found their footing after the disaster that was Mighty No. 9. Make the bad guys cry like an anime fan on prom night. With the Bloodstained Curse of the Moon games, as well as most recently, Gal Guardian's Demon Purge making this of interest. I was absolutely flabbergasted when I came across the Toho Empires, primarily because of its cover art on Steam, which you can gaze upon right here. But characters in this game appear to be their regular anime lady selves. More interestingly, this is a real-time strategy game of all things, which I was certainly not expecting, down to having worker drone units getting resources, making it so weird that I love it. There happens to be a number of cozy farm sims in this list, such as Litchi Town, one that is set in a rural village and interestingly, is based on the experiences of some members of the production team who have actually lived this life. The combination of the 3D models and cartoon character portraits sure does look like Coral Island, but the more Chinese-inspired setting seems neat. I do wonder what they will do to differentiate themselves from other farming games, but I'm a fan of the genre and will be keeping an eye on this. This next title looks super stylish and sleek since Skybreakers is an all-action roguelite with variety in characters, weapons and playstyles, and thankfully does not go full-on vampire survivors, although there is a little bit of that with enemies on all sides. There's a combo meter which is an interesting addition and adds to the dopamine release, so for how great this looks, it makes me curious about the overall structure of the game and how progression works. If you're a fan of factory building games, Shape Hero Factory might be of interest, one that adds in tower defense and a roguelite structure to the genre, where instead of producing random knickknacks, you are instead training troops to fend off monsters to protect your factory. 
I do like the art style and how everything is on paper, looking like an absolute delight. I last talked about Sono Kuni at last year's TGS event, and they've released a more substantial gameplay trailer showing off this top down high speed action title set in a biopunk world crossed with Japanese mythology. From the trailer, you'll see that the hip hop crew made this title, so it's an interesting background for sure, but I don't know if that will translate into it being a good game, but at least there should be interesting ideas. The action looks a little like Hotline Miami crossed with Akane, so it should be neat, but again, I'm worried about how visually busy the entire game is. One of the more divisive things in games is inventory Tetris being more of a hassle in games like Diablo and Resident Evil, but has been co-opted as its own thing in games like Backpack Hero and now Backpack Battles as well, but despite the similarity in naming, it's not from the same developer. It's an inventory management roguelite auto battler in which adjacent items affect each other and seems to have Super Autopads style asynchronous multiplayer and looks great. Someone tell the developer of Deadlock Station that they forgot to include background music in the trailer, so here's a little something from me, but despite that, this is a pixel art roguelite auto battler that does look pretty good. In contrast with auto chess and spat games, you are not rolling for heroes in order to merge them, but rather select heroes for the run and then upgrade their equipment, having a hub base that I believe will be the center of the progression systems from run to run and looks pretty interesting overall. Stories tell of a time when the skies were lost and we could no longer build among the clouds. We had forgotten how to gather distant resources, and we could no longer explore our vast horizons. I'm a little bit behind on my indie games, so apologies if you've seen this one before. Since I believe Airborne Empire was first announced at Summer Game Mess in June, where this is the direct sequel to Airborne Kingdom, and in many ways is very similar. You're building floating cities in the skies, having to consider things like balance and thrust to keep the city afloat, with the new facet added in this being the presence of pirates and more direct combat. I'm not quite sure how to describe this game, but it is certainly one of the more beautiful looking titles that I've come across, where in Abyss Fantasia, you play as a young girl, who has to step into the abyss and descend down the hole in a manner not unlike the anime made in Abyss. However, it's an adventure RPG of all things in that there are characters to meet, decisions to make, and some combat-esque scenarios but stops short of being a full-blown turn-based RPG, so I'm rather curious since it doesn't quite fit in any one box. However, what is clear is the art is gorgeous, so hopefully it will have the gameplay systems to match.
Oh my god, I just cracked a smile when I came across this title and had to cover it since Call of Boba is something that my friends and I have experienced from time to time in having to get that delicious chewy treat. And where this is a simulation roguelite RPG which is super interesting, mixing the shop management aspect of running a bubble tea shop, farming sim elements like farming, fishing and building relationships, as well as action roguelite combat where you battle enemies. Instead of inheriting Grandpa's farm, you are attempting to revive a struggling boba tea shop where this is just whimsical and weird which makes it my gem. Also announced earlier but getting a spot in TGS is Breath H2, a first person survival game that is the follow up to a relatively underrated title set in space. The sequel appears to allow you to get down onto planets with a larger mission of defeating an evil space corporation where the most interesting aspect is that the original was a tightly crafted single player experience with no desire to be like Rust or Ark with the sequel looking to be made with the same design philosophy. This pixel art RPG title also caught my attention since it just looks cool with the name of the game being the same as our protagonist named Moth Qubit. As a corporate life RPG in which our protagonist has just been promoted, so he seeks to redeem or eradicate himself with the mysterious final process being an ominous sounding impending event hanging over it all. It's also a weird and interesting game having yuppie psycho vibes as well. This title was shown off at the Hosen Direct, but I didn't have the time to cover it, where Everdeep Aurora is an exploration platformer in which you play as a cat person, having to go deeper and deeper into the Everdeep in search of your missing mother. While it does look like a metroidvania, I don't believe there's any combat in this, so it's more about puzzles and exploration, with platforming of course. It seems like there will be plenty of room to hide secrets in this game which I'm all about so definitely put this on your watch list. Okay, I'm fairly certain this game was newly reviewed at TGS so I hope it's new to you as well, with Daiso Mensa being a roguelike deck builder with an awesome look. The hand-drawn art and animations look good, especially the facial expressions of enemies, and I do particularly love the first-person perspective and how our character pulls out a crossbow to shoot enemies for example. In addition to the cards, there are dice that you can roll to tweak the battle to your advantage, such as modifying enemy stats, chaos, changing HP values, altering card effects and more, looking like it's for fans of the genre. If you love cozy games like me, Kameru, a frog refuge, must be put onto your wishlist right now since it just looks awesome being a farm sim in which you are caring for frogs and looks oh so wonderful. You have the task of restoring some wetlands from your childhood, having to raise, feed, breed, photograph and collect frogs in order to do so.
There are mini games to be played, toys and furniture to please and more, all with an excellent hand-drawn art style that immediately relaxes me even upon just watching this trailer. Of course, me being me, if there's a hot new metroidvania in play, I have to take a look, with Twilight Monk certainly checking boxes in the visuals department and just looks great. Apparently this is an adaptation of a book series, which I was previously not aware of, and again, like that anime game mentioned earlier in this video, I don't think there's a need to know the source material in order to enjoy this. Some of the concept art and environments look absolutely gorgeous, so I expect a breathtaking journey through this world and it was like one of the most no-brainer picks from the show in my opinion. If you thought that this game's art style looked familiar, it is because Metal Bringer is from the same developer as Samurai Bringer, which is basically a Muso roguelite, and with this appearing to be their sci-fi version, but with fewer enemies and more giant bosses. You are also able to create your own mech, so take that Armored Core 6, looking fun as well, and you can find more of the best of 2022 in this video.